Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. 
Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your Church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Now will I praise those godly men, our ancestors, each in his own time. But of others, there is no memory. For when they cease, they cease, and they are as though they had not lived. They and their children after them. Yet these also were godly men whose virtues have not been forgotten. Their wealth remains in their families, their heritage with their descendants. Through God's covenant with them, their, their family endures their posterity for their sake. And for all time, their progeny will endure. Their glory will never be blotted out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let them praise His name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to Him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves His people, and He adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in His people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple area. He looked around at everything and since it was already late, went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day as they were leaving Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing from a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went over to see if he could find anything on it. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves. It was not the time for figs. And he said to it in reply, May no one ever eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard it. They came to Jerusalem, and on entering the temple area, he began to drive out those selling and buying there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. He did not permit anyone to carry anything through the temple area. Then he taught them, saying, Is it not written, 
My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, but you have made it a den of thieves. The chief priests and the scribes came to hear of it and were seeking a way to put him to death. Yet they feared him because the whole crowd was astonished at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. Early in the morning as they were walking along, they saw the fig tree withered to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you curse has withered. Jesus said to them in reply, Have faith in God. Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it should be done for him. Therefore I tell you, all that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, listening at our Gospel today, it seems that Jesus was in a bad mood. It seems that Jesus got up on the wrong side of the bed that day because when he saw a fig tree without any fruit, he cursed the tree. And then when he went to the temple and found out that people turned the temple into a marketplace, Jesus drove those who are engaging in business out of the temple. He overturned their tables. What was the reason why Jesus seems to be in a bad mood that day? Was it because he was hungry? Our gospel today explicitly stated that Jesus was hungry. That is why he approached the fig tree to look for food, for fruits. Kapag gutom tayo, mabilis uminit ang ulo natin. Or was he tired? That is why he was at the bad mood that day. My dear brothers and sisters, the reason for the anger of Jesus is that the fig tree that was supposed to produce fruit does not have any fruit. And the temple that was supposed to be holy was desecrated by the people. Jesus was angry because they did not do what they were supposed to do. When we are supposed to do something and we do not do it, God is greatly displeased. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are being reminded of our responsibility to do well what we are supposed to do. If you are a parent, then be a good parent. If you are a child, then be an obedient and loving child. If you are married, then be faithful to your spouse. 
If you are an employee, then work well. Do your tasks well. If you are a student, then study well. If you are a public servant, then serve the people well, not yourself. If you are a priest, then be faithful in your life and ministry as a priest. If you are a Christian, then be true to your name as a Christian. Do well what you are supposed to do. In our first reading today from the book of Sirach, we are told of the godly men, our ancestors, whose virtues and good works are never forgotten. Yung mga taong bagamat hindi na natin kasama ngayon, wala na sa mundong ito, pero naaalala pa rin natin dahil sa mga mabubuti nilang ginawa. Dahil ginawa nila ang dapat nilang gawin, hindi sila nakakalimutan. Nananatili ang kanilang alaala at ang kanilang kwento sa atin. If we do what we are supposed to do, if we do well our tasks and responsibilities, then we will never be forgotten. Our story will remain from generations to generation. My dear brothers and sisters, what are you supposed to do? What is expected of you? Ano ba ang dapat mong gawin? Ano ba ang yung mga tungkulin? Ano ba ang yung mga responsibilidad sa buhay? Let us not be like the fig tree that Jesus cursed because it did not give any fruit. Let us not be like the people who turned the table, the temple, into a marketplace. As Christians and as followers of Jesus, let us do what we are supposed to do. And let us do them well. And God will surely be pleased. We now call upon God the Father, who poured out on us His love and constant care, and ask Him to create within our minds and hearts a willingness to obey His commandments. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the Church may teach God's people to obey God's commandments out of love, and not out of fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be faithful to the command to love God and to love our neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are walking in the darkness of sin may find inspiration and courage to live up to the demands of God's commandments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may never neglect the sick, the old, the lonely, and all who suffer in our midst. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may find eternal rest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray now in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers which we offer in faith. Let us know the love and peace of Jesus, your Son, and our Mediator. We ask this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
if you could bless me that the awful foot of their king of him and it will become for us the bread of blessing be God for them. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us, the source of merit, may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore He has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey Him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am I not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Nagbibigay, buhay ka. 
kaligtasang ganap Dakilang kaloob na sa bigay Tanda ng pag-ibig ng Diyos na buhay O sakramentong banal Nakahanga-hanga, papurihan natin at lahat ng bansa o sakramentong banal. Nakahanga-hanga, tanggapin natin buhay niya. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you.